Welcome back to my channel. It's time for some humor. This is a continuation of the pitch meeting for the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And so let's hop into it. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. Movie number four. What are we going to do to keep things fresh? Well, that's a good question, because at this point in massively popular franchises, movies risk drifting into this kind of self-plagiarism, you know, where they're going through a checklist of moments that people come to expect, and the characters become parodies of themselves. Right, right, right. Right. So how do we avoid that? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, fair enough. So we're gonna go all in on Jack Sparrow, right? And there's a magical thing going on. Some pirates are undead. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of sword fights that aren't based in physics at all. There's a young couple that fall in love. Sounds like a pirate's movie to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what exactly happens in this thing? Well, we're gonna meet up with Jack, right? And he's trying to save Gibbs by pretending to be this judge. Oh, he is? Yeah, but he's still got his eyeliner and his gold teeth, so it's very funny. So not only does nobody really realize that he's not this judge, but they also don't notice his extremely piratey features. Somehow they don't, but eventually they're gonna get caught because their getaway driver had accepted a bribe, so he drives them into custody. If they knew there was a getaway driver and they knew who he was, why didn't they just stop them at the courthouse? Unclear. So then Jack has to meet King George, and he's upset because there are reports that the Spanish know where the Fountain of Youth is. Oh yeah, Jack was looking for that at the end of the last movie, wasn't he? He was, and he came really close to finding it, but then he gave up. Oh. So King George wants Jack to guide a ship that's led by Captain Barbosa, who's working for him now and missing a leg. He's from the other movies. He sure is, sir. But then Jack does that thing where he does a bunch of wacky stuff and escapes. He wasn't chained up. He was, but the chains were making too much noise, so the king had them removed. Okay, yeah, all right, whatever. Anyway, so then Jack's gonna go to this place where somebody's pretending to be him to recruit people for an expedition. Right. And it turns out it's this beautiful woman disguised as him, and he used to have a romantic thing with her. A beautiful woman was dressed like him and interacting with people and nobody noticed? That's what we're going with. Wow, disguises are extremely effective in these movies, huh? They sure are, sir. So eventually Jack's gonna find out that she's actually Blackbeard's daughter and he ends up on Blackbeard's ship. And what's Blackbeard's deal? Well, he's got a zombie crew and a sword that makes his ship go fast when he points it. What's that all about? Oh, we're well past explaining that kind of thing. That's fair, I don't know why I asked. So anyway, there's this prophecy, right? And it says that Blackbeard's gonna be killed by a man with one leg, so he he wants to find the Fountain of Youth. A prophecy? Yeah, sure, a prophecy. I don't even care anymore. Isn't the Fountain of Youth's whole thing restoring people's youth? Why would it help prevent a murder? Well, sir, because of magic, it's also helpful for murder prevention, is what I seem to have written here. Oh, multitasking fountains are tight. But the thing is, to get the Fountain of Youth to work, they need to get their hands on a mermaid tear. Why would the Fountain of Youth need a mermaid tear to work? Because I thought it'd be pretty cool to have some mermaids in the movie. That makes sense. Oh, and also they need these two chalices and one person has to drink water out of one of them with a mermaid tear and the other person has to drink water without a mermaid tear. Okay, so that should be enough objects for them to have to find and fill up some screen time. Exactly. So then the person that drank the mermaid tear gets all the years the other person has lived plus any years they would have lived if they hadn't drank the thing. So who figured these very specific things out? Some humans a long time ago, I guess. They just happen to be drinking water out of two chalices, one of which had a mermaid tear in it. Sure, I don't care. So then they get their hands on this mermaid named Serena, and she has this instant connection with a missionary that Blackbeard had on his ship. Why do they have an instant connection? Well, they're both attractive. Gotcha, and so they take one of her tears and they go to the fountain? Well, they have to carry her along with them. Why? Because the tears have to be fresh. That's part of it. So that means somebody attempted it with a mermaid tear that wasn't fresh and then identified that that was the problem, and word of that somehow reached these pirates. That's what we're going with, because or else there's no reason for them to bring a mermaid along with them. Fair enough. Man, it's super helpful for these stories that hide hyper-specific magic with very vague backgrounds is a thing. Oh, you have no idea. I'm using magic to explain everything here. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So anyway, then at a certain point, both Jack and Barbosa are trying to steal the chalices that the Spanish have, and they're gonna get captured. Why don't the Spanish just kill them? Unclear. Huh. So then Barbosa reveals he doesn't even care about the Fountain of Youth. He just wants to kill Blackbeard because he took the Black Pearl and made it tiny. What? Magic. Gotcha. So wait, Barbosa doesn't really want the Fountain of Youth, and Jack doesn't really want it, but he was roped into the whole thing. Yeah. And Blackbeard and his daughter just want it because of the prophecy, and the Spanish just wanted to destroy it in the name of religion. And the British 
British only want it because the Spanish want it, so none of these characters actually really want the thing that they're all racing towards here. Yeah, no, not really. The protagonist was kind of just dragged into somebody else's adventures, and everybody's kind of evil, so it doesn't really matter who gets there first. That's right. So what part of the story are people supposed to care about? Well, there's that love story between the missionary and the mermaid, so people are gonna care about that. Oh, I seriously doubt it, but Jack Sparrow's in the movie, so it's gonna make money. That's a good point. So anyway, back to the story, Jack and Barbosa have to figure out how to escape, right? That's gonna be hard to do as prisoners. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, with the rope around him, Jack starts to climb up the palm tree he's tied to. Don't the guards see him? No, cause see, they tied them up to trees pretty far away from the camp with no one guarding them. Oh, people in this movie are very bad at taking prisoners. They sure are, sir. So Jack manages to get to the top of the tree. How does he get the rope around the top branches? Oh, we're gonna cut away for a second when he's doing that, so don't even worry about how he did that. Oh, great. And then since Jack Sparrow with some rope is still basically Spider-Man, he's gonna grab a tree and tie a bunch of bad guys together and escape. Wow, 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 wow. So then eventually everybody's gonna end up at the fountain, right? It's like some kind of big fountain party. Ah, like the Friends intro. Kind of. Yeah, but no, not at all. Okay. And so the Spanish are like, guess what? We're gonna destroy the chalices and wreck this place because only God can grant eternal life. Why'd they wait until now to destroy the chalices? Dramatic effect. Gotcha. And then there's gonna be this big fight and Barbosa's gonna end up stabbing Blackbeard with a poison blade and Angelica's gonna get cut too. Oh, very exciting. And then that mermaid pops up with the chalices for no apparent reason and Jack fills them up and offers them to Angelica and her dad. Okay. And Blackbeard's gonna selfishly drink the one with the mermaid tear, but then Jack is like, actually, I knew you'd do that, so I switched them. Very clever. Yeah, so then Blackbeard dies and Angelica's wound heals up. So the fountain also heals wounds? Yeah, it's magic, so sure, okay. Sure, okay. Oh, and also that missionary guy is hurt, and so that mermaid kisses him and drags him to the bottom of the ocean, which is somehow helpful. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'm not really attached to them either, sir, but we need a young couple in love. That's the formula. Fair enough. And so then Jack drops Angelica off at this deserted island with a gun and a single bullet. Oh, and her hands are tied? Actually, Jack is like, I'm fully aware that you got out of your restraints half an hour ago. So how come she doesn't grab the gun and point it at him? Unclear. So then Jack gets on a boat and leaves while she's all upset. And she doesn't make any effort to get on the boat. Isn't she kind of invincible now because of the fountain? What's going on here? Yeah, listen, sir, I just want to sideline her without killing her in case people like the character and we could bring her back. Oh, okay. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it doesn't really feel like any characters have grown or changed or that any of this has had any impact on anything. Well... Yeah, that's about right. Well, that's all right with me. We should definitely shoot this in 3D, though. That's all the rage. We could use those Avatar cameras. It sounds expensive. Yeah, it shouldn't be too expensive budget-wise, although I guess Johnny Depp is gonna cost a lot. Oh, yeah, this might get out of hand. Oh, God. You know, the one thing you made a point of, even I thought about it when I saw that movie was when uh, Johnny Depp's character uh, climbed up the tree. It's like, how did he get over the branches? <laughs> even I thought even I thought about that at that time. I'm like, oh. but you make a good point. As usual, this guy is great. He makes a good point. It was basically, there was no real sense to the story. It was just put them on the screen and bring in the money. That was about it. They really didn't put much effort into the movie, you know, for story-wise at least. But still, so it was funny though. All right, we're going to go to, um, let's see, this would be the fifth movie. I don't remember the movie. I've lost track after the first Pirates Caribbean. I've lost track of what the name of the other movies are. So I'm not going to bother trying to introduce whatever the fifth movie was, but let's check it out. Here we go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. What if we did a Pirates of the Caribbean sequel? Oh, I feel like we've had this conversation before. We have, sir, and we're gonna keep having this conversation so long as it keeps making us money. Oh, I like the way you money. So what happens in this one? I mean, I feel like you already know. I feel like I do, but can you elaborate, though? It doesn't necessarily feel relevant, sir. You know, Jack Sparrow, an antagonist with an undead crew, a young couple falling in love, some vaguely magical and nautical things. Oh, that does sound like like a pirate movie, can you elaborate more? Uh, 
Yeah, okay. Amazing. So in this one, we're gonna start with Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner's son, this kid named Henry. They're from the other movies. They sure are, sir. And so Henry manages to find that flying Dutchman ship that Will is on, you know, with the curse. Right. And so Henry's like, Dad, I figured out how to break your curse. We need to get Poseidon's trident. And Will is like, quiet, the crew's gonna hear you. Isn't he the captain? Why is he worried about them hearing? Well, I'm told that scenes need tension, so I'm kind of fabricating some here. Oh, okay, very smart. So anyway, Will is like, yeah, no, it's impossible to find the trident by now, but nine years later, Henry's still looking for it. Oh, motivated offspring is tight. Yeah, and eventually this evil ghost Salazar is gonna kill his entire crew, but he's gonna leave Henry alive. Why? Well, he's like, I want you to tell Jack Sparrow that I'm gonna kill him one day. And he can't tell him that himself? No, nope. because this curse is keeping him in that general area. And also he's like, dead men tell no tales. Oh. Which is gonna be the name of the movie. He said the name of the movie. He did. Amazing. So why does the Salazar guy want to kill Jack anyway? Oh, well, see, Salazar was a pirate hunter, but then young Jack did a tricky move that led him to crashing into a cursed triangle thing and becoming a ghost along with his crew. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and then Jack became captain of the Black Pearl, and his crew gave him a bunch of costume elements, like his hair beads. Well, that's how he got the hair beads. That's how he got his hair beads. You know, I've been enjoying these movies, but the whole time I've been like, how the heck did he get those Frickin' hair beads. Well, we're finally answering that, sir. And also, we're gonna reveal how we got the name Jack Sparrow. How did that happen? Well, see, when Salazar saw Jack, he said he thought he looked like a little sparrow. So that's where that came from. Salazar said that to his crew before they all died? How did word of that even spread? <laughs> Unclear. And so how are we gonna learn all this stuff anyway? Oh, well, Salazar is gonna be telling the story to Barbosa. I thought you said dead men tell no tales. You just said that. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Whoopsie. Anyway, so then we're gonna meet this girl, Karina right? Okay. And she, she has a diary from her long lost father and that is, it's also a map and you need the map to find the island where the trident of Poseidon is supposed to be. Sure. But you can only, you got, you can only see it when there's a blood moon. A blood moon, right? And you need a jewel, too. A, you, a red jewel? Are you just coming up with this stuff right now? Oh, yeah, of course I am, 100%. But now they have some things they need to gather throughout the movie, and that's gonna fill up the runtime quite a bit. That works for me. Oh, and also Jack is gonna trade that magical compass of his for a drink, and the betrayal of the compass frees Salazar and his crew from the Devil's Triangle. Hasn't Jack given away his compass before in this franchise? Yeah, but this time he did it with different intentions or something, so now the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. So eventually Jack and Karina and Henry are all gonna meet and they're gonna team up because they want to fight this trident before Salazar kills Jack. Wow, pretty wacky coincidence that Jack did the thing that releases Salazar just before meeting Henry who just met Salazar who told him to tell Jack that he would kill him. Extremely wacky, sir. What are the odds, right? Oh, just so impossibly slim, I imagine. Probably. So anyway, Salazar is gonna get Barbosa to help him track down Jack because he's from the other movies. He's from the other movies. He sure is, sir. But eventually Barbosa is gonna betray Salazar, because double crosses are things that people have come to expect from Pirates films, so we got them in here. Very true. But now they don't have a ship, so that's kind of a problem. So what do they do? Well, in the last movie, we revealed that the Black Pearl is now tiny and inside a bottle, and so Jack had that in his jacket, and they just make that big again with magic or something. Jack has a glass bottle in his jacket the entire time. Doesn't he fall constantly? How does that thing not break? I don't, probably magic again. It doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't, no. And so eventually, Barbosa's gonna figure out that that Karina is his daughter. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's gonna be an awesome big reveal. Is it though? I'm not sure the moment feels entirely earned. I don't think you need to earn moments like that. They get away with that stuff all the time in, you know, soap operas. That's a good point. So eventually they're gonna figure out that the trident is off this magical island and the ocean is gonna split into two towards it. Oh, and I guess Salazar's on their tail, huh? He is, but the thing about Salazar's curse is that he can't walk on land, so he has to possess Henry, which is a thing he's able to do that I'm just mentioning now for the first time. Oh, very cool. But one guy's like, sir, if you go on land while possessing someone, you're gonna be stuck on land forever. And Salazar's like, yes, but the trident can help with that. Okay, and how does everybody know all these very specific curse rules? I don't know. Maybe when you get cursed, it comes with an instruction manual. That makes sense. So then there's gonna be this big old fight at the bottom of the ocean, and Henry and Karina are gonna solve a little riddle, because curses often involve riddles. They sure do. So what do they figure out? So they realize that the trident contains all curses, so they have to destroy it. Wow, so it must be 
difficult to break the trident of Poseidon, god of the sea. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they hit it, and it breaks. Oh, well, great. Yeah, it works out great. You hit it, and it breaks. That's how that works. You'd think that thing might be a bit more solid, but fantastic news that it's not. So now that all curses are broken, the sea's gonna start collapsing onto itself, obviously, and Salazar's men aren't cursed anymore. Oh, so everybody has to run? They do, and all the good guys are running, and they jump onto an anchor from the Black Pearl, and Barbosa's gonna sacrifice himself to save Karina. Right, because she's his daughter, is what you seem to have written. Exactly, and later somebody's gonna ask her her name, and she's gonna be like, Karina Barbosa. Wow, well, you seem really pleased with this, so I guess it'll be in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does the movie end? Well, now that all curses are broken, Will Turner can come back on land. So I guess his ship was above water when the curse ended then? Yeah, I guess it was. And so what happens with the souls of the dead now? Wasn't it kind of Will's job to bring them to the afterlife? Yeah, they're dead anyway, so I feel like it doesn't matter. Wait, wasn't the curse the only thing keeping Will alive? They cut his heart out in the third movie. Look, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about Will's curse. He's all better now, okay? Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thanks, and so then Will is reunited with his son and with Elizabeth. You know, now that I think of it, it kind of seems out of character for Elizabeth to not have joined on a big sea adventure to save Will. Yeah, but Kira Knightley costs a lot now, so... Oh, good point. Yeah, she should stay on land for sure then. And then in a post credit scene, we're gonna have Davy Jones show up and we're gonna see his shadow with the tentacles and stuff. Wasn't his whole appearance part of his curse? That shouldn't still be on his head. Yeah, I don't care. Fair enough. And so yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a pirate's movie to me. I'm just not sure we need to do that whole Karina is a Barbosa thing. Like, does everything have to be connected? Does everybody have to be related all the time? Yeah, because that automatically makes it good storytelling. Oh, okay, then let's keep doing it. Hey everybody, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. And check back soon for a new one, because there's going to be new ones, you know? Okay, bye. Oh, God. I enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoy that, too. So they've made five Pirates of the Caribbean. I heard, or I read, I should say, I didn't actually listen, but I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true, but I had read that Disney has um, had basically uh, it's a possibility that they're going to make another Pirates of the Caribbean movie with Johnny Depp now that he's been proven that his ex-bitch, uh, ex-wife, uh, yeah, her, uh, is full of shit, no pun intended but that she was not necessarily in it. And I'm not going to get into that. People will get upset about it. But it, it, he was able to, since he was, Johnny Depp was found that she was responsible and his, that she was wrong. And Disney is going to, I don't know if this is true, but I read that they are going to sign him to do another Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I hope that's true, because my my feeling about that situation with her, with her and Johnny Depp, is they got they they got rid of him, just on simple, being accused, not proven but accused, that they should have fired her as well, but they didn't. So my feeling is he should be fair to fair. If you're gonna get rid of one, you should get rid of the other, and if you're gonna keep one, you should keep the other. In any case, I uh, hope you enjoy this video reaction. And yeah, that uh, creator there, his name's Ryan. And uh, so, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this. You have a wonderful day or night. Take care of yourself and the ones you love. Bye bye.